Hello and good day everyone. Welcome to Elevation Niche. I am Desmond O'Neill and today we are going to be dealing with a simple topic that is called 10 ways in which to deal with a narcissist. Let's get into it. All right. So um, what I am going to share with us here is just based on my own personal uh, journey to this very controversial topic, uh, if we if we might say so. Uh, that's all I am going to do today. And this is just a practical layman's version on um, what we should do that is just based on my own personal experience and is in no way intended to um, take away from the fact that you need to go to therapy or you need to go and see a qualified therapist. All right. So without any further ado, let's get into the subject area today. All right. So um, before I get into the list, I will, of course, leave some valuable information at the bottom of the screen or right, right down there in the uh, section. All right. I am going to leave some information there for you in the description section. Now, that's the word I'm looking for. I don't know why I'm searching for words today, but I'm going to leave some information in the description area uh, where you are going to be able to get some valuable information in order to deal with the subject. All right. So let's get into what we want to deal with today, which is 10 ways to deal with a narcissist. And the first thing is, number one, if you are wondering whether or not the relationship that you are in is a narcissistic relationship, if you're wondering that, chances are you probably are in a narcissistic relationship. So the first thing you've got to do is to educate yourself. And I'm glad that you've decided to listen to us on this channel because we are going to educate you. Yes, we're going to educate you on what exactly is a narcissist, what narcissism is all about, and what you should do if you are in a narcissistic relationship. So the very first thing is to actually educate yourself, right? What you don't know can kill you. Yes, what you do not know can kill you. So get to learn exactly what is the narcissistic personality disorder. Try to find out what it is, what it means, what it entails. And if you are in your relationship, then you most probably would, as you educate yourself, you would recognize that some of the things that are highlighted by people such as myself who have been through narcissistic relationship and the psychologists and so on will highlight to you some things and it will match up to what you are going through in your relationship. So if that is, if it is matching up, well, thank God you've decided to educate yourself. All right. Understand that it is a, dis a disorder like any other disorder. It is a disorder and people who are going through this thing, they can't fix themselves right they cannot fix themselves and neither can you so don't think for one minute that you can fix a narcissist uh, maybe you can um, douse them in prayer now god answers prayer and god most can can do everything god can do it and nothing is impossible to them that believe but you've got to understand something about god now god will not work on a person who does not think that they need help. Let me say that again. God will not work on a person who feels that they do not need help. The Bible, Jesus himself says, it is those that are sick that needs the physician. And so if you do not believe that you need a physician, then it would not work. It's just like Alcoholics Anonymous. If a person who is an alcoholic do not think that they need help, then it just can't work, all right? So God can only work on people who can help themselves, all right? So I'm just educating you, 
so that you will understand. All right. The second thing is you have got to learn to set some boundaries. Set some boundaries. Whether you are male or female, chances are your non-negotiables or your barriers are way too low or non-existent. That is the reason why the narcissist will, of course, walk all over your boundaries. And understand this, the narcissistic individual, they actually choose people whose boundaries are very, very low. It's like getting into um, getting into a business, right? Most people get into businesses that has a low barrier to entry, or the narcissists do the very same thing. They get involved with people that have low self-esteem, low worth of themselves. Your boundaries are very, very low. In some cases, your boundaries are non-existent. And once you are in that position, then you are prime target for the narcissist. So please understand that most probably if you are in a narcissistic relationship, the narcissist chose you and very hardly likely the other way around. Uh, the other thing is narcissists tend to be very, very charming. And if you do manage, and we will talk about that later on in this presentation, uh, if you do manage to talk to somebody about narcissism, they will say who she or who him no way that is impossible because the narcissists are quite charming and they most and all of not most of the time all of the time they have a narcissistic mass that project one thing to everybody else and when when you are within the relationship with them you will not see it at all and so that is what is going to be taking place there so please make sure and boundary up Narcissists don't like boundaries at all. And if you are already in a relationship with them and now you decide to set up some boundaries, you are going to experience what is called a narcissistic rage. They are going to be very, very angry. They're going to become, they're going to become very belittling towards you. And they're going to slew a whole, they're going to throw a whole set of accusations and so on against you because you decided uh, to set up some boundaries. Uh, some simple boundaries are, um, I will not tolerate the way that you speak to me. Yeah. Um, and I will not agree with you belittling me. Yeah, those are, those are some strong boundaries. And from the time you put those up, you're going to recognize, they are going to recognize that you are not somebody to toy around with. And of course, they are going to be very, very angry. The third thing that we need to be aware of is stay calm. The narcissists often try to provoke emotional reactions. And by provoking emotional reactions in you, it is actually like a drug to the narcissist. It is called a narcissistic supply. So whether you fly off the handle and you get very, very angry with them, they love that. They absolutely love it because what ends up happening is that the, the narcissist more often than not plays the victim. Strange, yeah, but this is how the personality disorder works. They play the victim and by provoking a response, an emotional response from you, they are they are quick to go and sit down and tell all of what is called their flying monkeys. Um, you see what they did to me? You see how they are treating me? Look how he is treating me. Or look how she is treating me. And that sort of thing. So you have got to stay calm in order not to provoke um, uh, emotional response from yourself. The narcissist, as I said, they thrive on drama. Right? So by you... Not prov not pr providing an emotional response, you actually remove the fuel from the fire or you are removing the drugs from the narcissist. And again, when you begin to do that, the, the narcissist is going to be very, very much upset because you are taking away their narcissistic supply that they depend on you heavily for. So once you begin to remove that narcissistic supply, you're going to hear things like, you've changed. How come you're dealing with this situation like this? I don't like this new you. 
because it begins now to become uncomfortable for them. All right. So just be aware, education is key. All right. So the fourth thing we're going to get into is avoid arguing. Narcissists, as I said before, they love drama. They absolutely love it. They love it like how pigs love mud. They love the drama. They love, and they will, they are the first individuals to tell you, I don't like drama. I don't like um, doing that. But actually, they do. They do. They do. So they will say things. They will come up with, and living with a narcissist is like this. Uh, they will come up with things years ago, things that, like years ago in order to, to, to bring drama in, into the picture. They will come up with things that you don't, you have not thought about. They will come up with some scenarios. They will say, um, what would you do if X, Y, Z? Just to provoke uh, emotional response out of you. And that is how they get their drugs, basically. That is how they get their narcissistic supply. Uh, one thing you must know with a narcissist. A narcissist deep down on the inside is very insecure about themselves. They don't like how how they view themselves. Uh, they have no empathy. So if it seems like if they can empathize with you, it's all a lie. It's fake. It's how they learn um, to fake it till they make it. Yeah. And they don't actually ever make it because the narcissist really and truly has no ability to understand how it is to be in another person's shoe they, they don't it's part of the personality disorder i had a difficult time trying to understand it once i under and once i understood un understood what being a narcissist is then i was able to say oh this is why this person behaved like this or oh, oh this is why they said that so arming yourself with education is the key avoiding an argument is also a key and again when you avoid an argument with the narcissist they will retaliate because that is how as i said they get their narcissistic supply from you they will retaliate they will try to in some way um muster up or or, or conjure up an argument with you all right so they they use something called a word salad yeah if you've ever been in an argument with a narcissist you always end up coming away with your tail between your legs because and you are wondering how come you didn't you didn't think about that or how come you you lost that argument and clearly they have been manipulating you all along you see what you've got to understand is that the narcissist they thrive on drama they when they got into the argument with you, they knew exactly, right? It's, it's like Dr. Strange. They sat down on the mountain and they tw twiddling their thumb. They're doing whatever they just do because they knew exactly the buttons to press in order to get you to react how they want you to react because that is their narcissistic supply. All right? So that's what they do. So you have got to protect your energy by avoiding argument with a uh, narcissist okay uh number five don't take it personally i've grown to understand that the narcissist when you really understand what it is you kind of feel sorry for them it might sound strange as much as they might manipulate you they might gaslight you they will get angry with you they will talk down to you they will hurl insults at you all right even if you're married to them or you're in a romantic relationship, you would want to find out how this person that has been so loving, that has been so charming, that has given you so much gifts and love bomb you, or they sex bomb you, or they, they just tell you all the things that you've always wanted to hear. The narcissist, you would want to know how they switch from that person to the person who is always bad talking you, who is always bringing you down, who is always hurling insults at you. You'd want to know how they move from that loving, charming person to this monster that you are now finding out about, right? And this is how the personality disorder is. Really and truly, when they begin to belittle you and when they begin to 
say all manner of things and they begin to devalue you, you have now entered the devaluation stage. So let me just quickly press pause and let's throw in some information here. Uh, being in a narcissistic relationship, you are going to be in a what I call a washing machine cycle. Right? It's a washing machine cycle. It, 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 it's wash, rinse, repeat. And you're going to be in that cycle eternally with a narcissist. They are going to love bomb you, especially when the relationship is new. When it starts, when they have chosen you, and it isn't the other way around, they have been watching you for quite a while, and the narcissist really, really knows who to get into a relationship with. They would not get into a relationship with, a, with, with an alpha male or with a, somebody who's an alpha, who's a leader. They, 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 they get into relationships with people like that. And you, they would always tell you, but it is you I love and I don't love anybody else. And it's true because they will not get into a relationship with somebody who they cannot manipulate. People who have uh, type A personality, they, they are alphas, they, they, they like to, to, to be in control and they don't go for people like that. They go for people who have low self-esteem, people who don't, don't value much about themselves. They go after people like that. And once they recognize that they are in a relationship, like and on, on top of that, oh, ah, right. So they go for people who are, have low self-esteem, who don't value themselves, who have low uh, mental and emotional barriers. They have very low barriers. On top of that, they also go for people who, if they can't, according to the type of personality they have, they will actually go for people who have a lot of money. Right? And how this works is people who have a lot of money and have a lot of things going on, uh, they don't have to interact with the person that much. All they can do, they can stay in the relationship. They can, they can put forward or project their charming, alluring self to this person who has a lot of money so that that person always sees that part of them. And when they see that part of them, the person who they are involved with, they're out on business trips a lot. Uh, they, they're hardly home. They have a lot of things going. So they only, and that's the thing with the narcissist, they can only project that false self for so long they can't do it every day a narcissist cannot live with you that's why when covid happened you find that a lot of relationships started to break up simply because nas the narcissist begins to to, to emerge because they cannot live with you um not Every day, right through, they cannot. It's it's impossible. That narcissistic mask begins to slip off, and the real them begins to show. And the the narcissistic individual now, they have no empathy. They they cannot really love. So love bombing isn't love at all. It has always been manipulation. So don't think for one minute that the narcissist has loved you. No, no, no. A lot of people cry over the narcissist, either the narcissistic husband or the narcissistic wife. Uh, they, they're crying over the fact that the person showed them a lot of love. No, no, no. It was always manipulation to get you to do their bidding. That was all that it was. And it's a, a mechanism that they grow to gravitate to from small. So if you have a person that has had a lot of uh, problems with their caretaker or with their parents from small, most probably you're going to get involved, you would have been involved with a narcissist, right? So that's what I said. If you learn what a narcissist is, you tend to be very, very um, sorry for them, right? So they love bomb you. That's, that's the first thing. And when they get you to, when they have drawn you in, then they begin to devalue you. Yeah. And that is when the snide remarks begin to come out. The disrespect begins to come out. Uh, that is where the, the belittling, the pulling down, they knock you down off your pedestal that they put you up on. Yeah. So they put you up on a pedestal and they shower you with all the love attributes and then they knock you down. All right, and then they say all manner of things, and then you now trying to get back on the pedestal, right? You're trying to wonder how come this person 
has been so loving how come they are talking to you this way the disrespect begins to come in and then after that then they, they begin to to disassociate themselves with you after a while so if you are in a romantic rela relationship with this individual they would stop texting they would stop calling uh they would stop wanting to find out more about you and then eventually they will discard you during the this devaluation stage that is when they are actually searching for a new supply they devalue you based because they recognize number one you begin to put into place the first four steps that we talk about yeah you begin to educate yourself you begin to set boundaries you begin to stay calm you are avoiding arguments and they recognize who this person is not what i thought it was and they begin to while in the relationship with you they begin to look for other people yes so that's why they would say that most narcissists cheat but that is not all that there is to cheating sometimes a person wants to get out of a relationship with a narcissist yes yeah, so the empaths actually can cheat as well they want to get out of the relationship with a narcissist but they don't know how to do it and when they get into a really authentic relationship with somebody then the relationship dynamics begin to, to play out right so if you are gaining any if you are gaining any knowledge if you are learning anything about the narcissistic narcissistic personality disorder uh, if you are learning about how to deal with a narcissist in the relationship all right i want you to please like hit that like button smash that like button all right um click the little notification bell click all and that way you will be notified whenever we have any brand new topic um to share with you on this channel all right so don't take it personally when you are involved with a narcissist it is a disorder you can fix it and they will not acknowledge that they are a narcissist you could come out you could scream it from the rooftop you can get a bell <laughs> the person that rings the bell from the church to ring the bells so it is heard from thousands of miles away they will not accept um, that they are a narcissist to the narcissist they see themselves as perfect and not just perfect absolutely perfect they can know they can make no mistakes uh, they can do no wrong they believe that they are higher than everybody else that they know more than everybody else and uh, they deserve more than everybody else yeah it's a grandiose type of that's how they see themselves all right and they believe that everybody should bow down and worship them. So you begin to see that the, the, the relationship the, or the personality disorder itself is actually a mirror of the devil. Because the devil cannot empathize with anybody. The devil does not empathize with you. The devil only wants worship. Yeah, something that is designed for God, that is what it is. And for those of you who don't believe in, in God and don't believe in religion, well, I am sorry for you because you are going to get wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in a narcissistic relationship and you will not know how to get out. In fact, the only way to get out, you've got to get your strength from God. The psalmist says, I lift my eyes onto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And he is able to give you strength to finally get the help you need or the encouragement you need to tell yourself, hey, I am no longer going to stay in this relationship. I am going to get out. So the sixth thing we're going to look at is the Grey Rock Method. So you educate yourself, you set boundaries, you are staying calm, you are now putting things in place because you now recognize that you are in a narcissistic relationship. And once you begin to put these things in place, I am saying you better know the God you serve. You better know Jesus Christ for yourself. You better know God because I am telling you the hungs of hell 
are going to be coming after you. When that narcissist recognizes that they no longer can manipulate you, they no longer can, can extract narcissistic supply from you, they no longer, you set up some strong boundaries, they are getting pushback, they are now going to begin their devaluation of you. And it's as if the, that sweet, beautiful woman that you met in the earlies or that handsome gentleman that you met in the earlies, they are going to turn from Dr. Jekyll to Mr. Hyde or from Mr. Hyde to Dr. Jekyll, however you want to put it. They are going to turn things around on you. And they are going to be so manipulative. They are going to begin to hide things from you. If it's hiding finances, if it's hiding important documents, they are going to begin to gaslight you. Uh, it means that they are going to manipulate your mind. They are going to make it look like if you are losing your mind, that you are going out of your rockers. They are going to manipulate you. And again, they are going to devaluate, devaluate you. They are going to be belittling you. They are going to be hurling insults at you, all in an effort to get back their narcissistic supply. Yes, they are going to be doing that constantly. So you have to employ what the psychologists call the gray rock method. And the gray rock method is simply becoming unresponsive or dull when dealing with the narcissist in order to shut off their narcissistic supply. Right? So gray rocking is it's it's it's, it's similar to staying calm, but it's taking it a step a step further. This you can employ if you have kids with the narcissist. You've decided to move out or move out on your own or do whatever, but you still have to um, interact with them simply because there are children involved. If you don't have children, well, then it's a blessing. But once you have children with a narcissist, all hell is going to be breaking loose because that narcissist is going to use the kids as leverage to extract narcissistic supply from you. They're going to use the kids as leverage to get you angry to provoke a response out of you, to get you to lose your cool and fly off the handle, and then they can now be the victim. Women are masterful at this. Masterful, masterful. They will play the victim. They will say, you see why I had to take the kids and go? You see why I had to do this? Look at his response. But they will not ever state what they did to provoke that response. And I am sorry that in the, the, the wider scheme of things, right, um, we don't have these sort of talks. They always talk um, when you're talking about male and female and how the man, you know, he flies off the handle and, and, and he becomes so emotional, he becomes so aggressive. Uh, but we don't ever decide to take a look. Could this man be dealing with a covert narcissist? It is something for, and I, I will um, actually have some guests on to talk about this. I, so, so we have some things that we're going to be working on, All right? So let's look at number seven. Stay assertive. Take control of your own emotions. The only person that is supposed to be in control of you is you. Do not allow people to manipulate you into a response. Be assertive. All right. Take act, take actions or take control of your own emotions and actions instead of allowing the narcissist to press your buttons. Right. You are not a puppet to be controlled by anybody. If it's anybody controlling you, let it be God and God alone. Right. Because He will always put you in the right direction. The reason why you came across this channel is because you need some help to deal with the narcissist and we are providing the tools for you to deal with the narcissist. There are some tools that we're going to put in the description. Please make sure and utilize them. They are going to be your best friends. They are going to 
help you to build back your self-confidence if you have low self-esteem, if you have a sense of low self-worth. These tools will help you to build back up yourself and they will help you to stand strong in the midst of a narcissistic relationship or they will help you to get out of that narcissistic relationship. And I don't know what other people tell you. If you even if you are married and you've recognized that you are married to a narcissist, listen to me, get out. The reason why you need to get out is because you your sense of self-worth is going to be low and low you are going to become crazy after a while they will send you stark raving mad you're going to lose your 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 cognitive ability to think for yourself right so the narcissist is the only the only way they will allow you to think for yourself is if you ask them imagine a person has to give you permission to be you. That is the devil. So you have got to get out of that relationship, my brother. You might have not known what narcissist is or my sister. You might not have known what a narcissist is. They were so alluring and charming. And after you get married, you begin to recognize that this person is the worst thing that you have ever come across. That's because the narcissistic mass has slipped off. You're beginning to see them for who they are and you need to get out of that, All right? You need to get out of that. So you've got to stay assertive in order to not allow the narcissist to manipulate you into being somebody who you are not. The eighth thing that we've got to recognize is that you've got to seek support. You cannot do this all by yourself. You've got to find a community. You've got to find a therapist to talk to. You've got to find a good friend who will, who has been through this because there are a lot of people who really don't understand what narcissism is. They just think that, oh, this person is just being selfish. Narcissism is way, way more than this being selfish. It is being manipulative. It is being, uh, it is being very rude. It is, it is being uh, evil, and all of that, all right? Uh, the ninth thing that we are going to look at, right? So, as I said, it is it's being rude, it is being disrespectful, it is being um, evil. Yeah, people will use children, as I said before, as leverage, uh, just, to, just to evoke a, 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 um, a response out of you. So you've got to, Seek some support. You've got to seek some support. All right. Um, the ninth thing we've got to look at, you got to limit contact. If you have to be in a relationship with the narcissist, maybe you have kids or maybe you work with one. This is the job that you have. And while you are searching for a new job, you've got to put up with some narcissism on the job. Or maybe it's your mommy or your daddy. The narcissist can be anybody. Mother, father, brother, sister, friend, right? Girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, boss. It can be anybody, all right? But once you recognize the patterns within a narcissist, the love bombing, then the devaluation, then the discard, right? Those are the three things. Love bombing, devaluation, discard, right? Um, some people say it's two things. You have the love bombing stage, and then you have two stages of the discard. One is the devaluation, right? And then the discard. And there's another stage now, which is uh, a step up from the love bombing, in that after the narcissist has discarded you, and they check around, they recognize that you were the best thing that they've had since sliced bread, then they will do what is called hoovering. After they have said all manner of things against you, after they have devalued you, belittled you, cursed you, um, wiped their feet with you and all sorts of things, then they want to get back into a relationship with you and that pulling back or that sucking back now is called hoovering. They usually hoover you back in for two reasons. One, if you have noticed their wicked ways, they want to suck you back in 
to really destroy you then, that's one, or two, they want to suck you back in to start the process all over again. Either way, it is no way that you, as a right-thinking person, will remain in that relationship. You need to get out of it. All right? So if you must stay in a relationship, you've got to limit contact. At this stage, you actually realize how destructive your mental health and well-being in it is. You've recognized how destructive to your mental health and well-being being with a narcissist is, right? Some people feel bad, especially empaths. And an empath is a person who can empathize. They have the ability to put themselves in other people's shoes. And most times, empaths stay in the relationship. They are the glue that holds the relationship together, not the narcissist. The empath is usually the person who doesn't want to go. Uh, they feel sorry for the person. Maybe they are studying their well-being. They are studying how they're going to make out, how they are going to um, get food, how they're going to pay the rent. If the person is the chief breadwinner, they're going to be studying all of these things. That is the reason why they haven't left the relationship as yet. right? But when you choose to limit reactions with the narcissist, the narcissist is not going to like it at all. But you have got to do this because, listen to me, this is about preserving yourself. It is about preserving your mental health. It is about preserving your, 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 your self as a person. All right? So if you must stay in a relationship with a narcissist, you have got to limit contact with them so that they will not be exercising a lot of their manipulation over you, all right? And if you are still here watching this video, I am grateful and glad that you are here. Please hit the like button, like and subscribe so that we can continue to provide you with more information, more tools to deal with the narcissist, all right? So if you came across this channel, we are talking about 10 ways to deal with the narcissist and the 10 thing to do, the 10 thing we've been through number nine and we're going to just go through them very, very quickly. All right. This for recapitulation purposes. Number one, educate yourself. Listen, um, like it and subscribe to this channel is going to be part of that process. Right. Number two, set boundaries. Narcissists don't like boundaries at all. In fact, they choose you because you had low boundaries, a low area, a low barrier to entry, basically. Set strong boundaries and hold the fort. Hold those boundaries. Number three, stay calm. It's not about you. It's a personality disorder that this person has, and this is how this disorder is. Number four, avoid arguing with the narcissist. You will not and cannot win. Even if you win the argument, the narcissist will do something to just show their dominance in this area. Avoid arguing at all costs. Number five, do not take it personally. As I said, it's a disorder, and this is how the disorder is. And men have the disorder. Women also have the disorder. Men can be covert narcissists. Women can also be covert narcissists. You've got to understand that. Number six, use the gray rock method. That means uh, that you have to be unresponsive. Do not let them, right, provoke a response out of you. Be unresponsive. Be dull. Um, even if what they said causes the hair on your skin to raise, just play it off, all right? And don't worry about it, all right? Um, number seven, stay assertive, stay strong, hold the fort. Do not let people pull your strings. Do not let people manipulate you, all right? Number eight, seek support from a therapist, from support groups. There are a lot of support groups on Facebook. Um, there are a lot of support groups on, on YouTube. There are a lot of support groups on the net. 
find a good support group where you can explore, you can talk about what being in that relationship has been like and all of that. All right. Um, number nine, limit contact. If you have to be in a relationship with a narcissist, please limit contact with them. And number 10, know when to walk away. Everybody has a threshold, right? And you've got to ask yourself, is this the way you want to live your life? You want to live your life going in a washing machine, going wrong in a washing machine over and over, going through the cycle over and over, where one minute they love you, next minute they hate you. Then they love you, then they hate you. Then they discard you. Then they love you again. And then they, are you satisfied living in a relationship where you are going around and like in a washing machine? You've got to know when to walk away. Most relationships with the narcissist, they do end. And if they leave you and they go with somebody else, do not be fearful that they're going to love the other person better than they love you. The narcissist does not have the capacity to love. Let me say that again. The narcissist does not have the capacity to love. Right? So you've got to understand that being in a relationship with a narcissist, the narcissist does not have the ability to love. Right? Whether it's a marriage or a romantic relationship, because no ordinary person stays in a one-sided toxic relationship. And that is what you are in. The reason why you find it hard to leave is because you're in a trauma bond. And to learn more about trauma bonds, check the link in the description. All right? So that's my 10 things to do or 10 ways in which to deal with a narcissist. If you think that there should be more, then please put that in the comment section. We would like to hear from you in terms of ways in which you deal with the narcissist in your relationship. So until we meet again, everyone, this is Desborn O'Neill here, and we are just glad that you were able to learn something from this channel. All right? So until we meet again, bye, everyone, and take care.